Welcome back and good afternoon. This is eSim Studios Tech News, episode number 237 on this Wednesday afternoon, November 13th, 2024. Got some interesting news for you today. Again, let me remind you, if you do miss any of these stories, uh, simply go to the eSim Studios YouTube channel. I will break these up into clips so you can see each story individually if you would like. And don't forget, you can listen to us on the go. Download the eSim Studios podcast. It is available on every podcast platform available. So, got some interesting news. OnePlus finally did the impossible. They are building a bridge between iOS and Android, taking it upon themselves. OnePlus makes file sharing with iPhones easy with their new feature. So the feature named Share with iPhone can help Android users to share files with iOS users. So OnePlus and Android users alike have faced a lot of issues when they want to share files uh, with iPhone users, right? The issue of the great divide between the two operating systems when sharing data from Android to iOS has been around for a long time. To address this issue, a new feature has been added to OnePlus's latest operating system. So the feature called quote unquote share with iPhone and it aims to allow Android users to share files with iOS users. Now, here is a detailed explanation of what you can expect. So to share with iPhone feature makes it easy to share files between different operating systems. This new feature is available directly in OnePlus's latest operating system, Oxygen OS 15. The new feature was introduced after OnePlus users complained about issues they encountered after updating their phones to Oxygen OS 15. Users reported being unable to share files. Moreover, Oxygen OS 15 will be released for the OnePlus 12 for the first time starting October 20th. This feature will be available as a beta version initially and then rolled out to all users in the near future. This new feature does not require any other third-party apps and is directly integrated into the operating system. Now you can share files with ease. This new feature aims to provide a similar working structure to ShareIt app, a third-party data sharing app. You can share files from OnePlus to any iPhone model by simply selecting the file and clicking the Share option. So how do you share with iPhone? Once downloaded, share with iPhone requires several permissions to function properly. The feature needs to remain open for the file sharing process to work. Once the entire setup is complete, OnePlus users can select the files they want to share. So how can you share your files and or documents with iOS devices from your Android device? First, you need to select the photo or video that you want to share. Now you need to open the share menu. After opening the share menu, you will find the quote unquote share with iPhone option. Pretty simple. This feature now opens a Wi-Fi hotspot from the OnePlus device. The iPhone user then joins this temporary hotspot. Now you are all set to transfer your files using this temporary hotspot. Please note that for the iPhone users, owners first need to download the O plus connect app from the Apple app store. Now I have a crazy story for y'all. I promoted this on a community post, came across this story. It's pretty revealing. So what is this story? TSMC is being sued for race and citizenship discrimination at the Arizona facilities accused of of preferring Taiwanese employees over United States employees. So TSMC is being sued by current and former employees, including its talent acquisition director for allegedly workplace discrimination. The employees claim that the world's largest semiconductor manufacturer favored employees with Taiwanese nationality 
to the exclusion of American employees. Now, Forbes first reported on this suit. The suit was first filed in August by talent acquisition director Deborah Howington. Howington claims she witnessed the HR department create a workplace where non-Asian and non-Taiwanese employees are subject to more scrutiny than similar situated Asian employees, including Taiwanese, the lawsuit states. TSMC is set to receive $11.6 billion from the United States government under the Chips and Science Act, including $6.6 billion in cash and $5 billion in loans. TSMC is using the funds to build a series of manufacturing uh, factories at its Arizona facility. Having accepted $6 billion in U.S. federal funding and elected to compete uh, within the U.S., uh, quote-unquote, TSMC must comply, quote-unquote, with federal discrimination laws and treat all races, national origins, and citizens equally, the plaintiff attorney Daniel Cochin of Cochin and Law Firm told Forbes. We are confident in our case and look forward to representing the case to a jury. At the same time of the writing, TSMC has not responded yet to eSIM Studios. That's right. I emailed their PR department. I requested a comment. Nothing. The company told Forbes that it, is, it strongly believes in the values of a diverse workforce and hires and promotes without regard to gender, religion, race, nationality, or political affiliation, as we value diversity and believe that equality amongst employment opportunities enhance our competitiveness, TSMC stated. Now, among the lawsuit allegations is that TSMC's human resources team in Taiwan would send resumes of candidates who had already been screened and qualified to work in the United States U.S. division for TSMC. The U.S. team then simply hired these Asian and Taiwanese candidates without asking any questions or without going through a hiring process, even when there were no open positions at the U.S. plant. The lawsuit also alleges that the positions did require Mandarin and Chinese skills and that the use of Mandarin is used to exclude employees who did not speak the language and it limited career opportunities and advancement. The lawsuit also alleges that Taiwanese workers with visas are used to reduce the number of union positions available to U.S. workers. There have been numerous reports that TSMC is struggling to gain a foothold in the United States over labor practices. It's led the company to expelling American workers and bringing in hundreds, if not thousands, of workers from Taiwan to meet deadlines. Additionally, TSMC is struggling to adapt to the U.S. work culture. So in October, TSMC's U.S. president, Rick Cassidy, said the Phoenix plant was achieving yields four times higher than a comparable production site in Taiwan in earlier testing, which is a good sign for the plant. Now, not much funding has yet flowed from the CHIPS Act because the U.S. government requires strict milestones for these chip makers to receive the tax-paying funds. It's unclear whether lawsuits alleging discrimination and hostile work environments against U.S. workers will have any further impact on this, but as well as any possible CHIPS Act changes as the Biden administration finishes its term and whitewashes former President Donald Trump upon the return in White House come January. Now, some more interesting insight when it comes to CPU performance testing. There's a new YouTube video by Techno, which compares performance of the latest flagship chipsets from Qualcomm, MediaTek, Apple, Google, and Samsung. Here's a breakdown 
of the key takeaways from this video. So the specific chipsets that were compared and tested was the Snapdragon 8 Elite, the MediaTek Dimensity 9400, the Apple A18 Pro, the Google Tensor G4, and the Samsung Exynos 2400. Tests conducted include Adobe Rush Export, Adobe Lightroom Export, Geekbench 6, and a 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test, and 3D Mark Solar Bay Test. So how did the how did this testing fare? How did this testing conclude? Well, it might shock you, but the overall winner of these tests was the MediaTek Dimensity 9400 was the overall winner with the Apple A18 Pro coming in a close second, the Snapdragon 8 Elite in third place, Exynos 2400 in fourth place, and you guessed it, Google Tensor G4 finished last, dead last. Now, my key observations from this test is that the Apple A18 Pro, which can be found in the iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max, excels in video and photo editing, as well as CPU overall CPU performance. Now, the MediaTek Dimensity 9400, it dominates in graphics and overall performance. The Snapdragon 8 Elite is a very strong contender, coming up just short of the other ones, but falls slightly behind the 9400, Dimensity 9400. The Samsung Exynos 2400 is a decent performer, not shabby, but it does lag considerably behind the other flagship CPUs. And let's face it, the Google Tensor G4, it struggles in most benchmarks, especially compared to the other flagship chipsets. So the conclusion of this video is that the MediaTek Dimensity 9400 is the most powerful chipset overall, but the A18 Pro is a great choice for users who prioritize video and photo editing. Now, the Google Tensor G4, well, they got a long ways to go. Let's just say we'll wait for the Pixel 10 with the TSMC-built Tensor G5. And that'll do it for today in the eSIM Studios Tech News, episode number 237. I do appreciate the time. Thank you for stopping by. Everybody, please be safe. And as always, I will see you tomorrow. Peace.